Hello everybody, Dave Matheson here. Uh, first want to thank very much uh, Professor Jeremy Lipschitz who's brought us all back to the 10 10 10 conference and now here we are 10 years later, can't believe it. And I thought what I would do is maybe recap and give a look back and a look forward on my presentation 10 years ago. I had uh, recently uh, written a book uh, that was published in 2008 called Be the Media. And the book was uh, trying to do two big things. One was uh, the first half of the book focused on independence and anything outside of corporate media, right? So this was how do we empower musicians, filmmakers, authors, journalists, photographers to build their own audience and generate their own revenue. So in other words, forget those major label contracts, forget those film distribution deals, forget those uh, publishing contracts for authors and do it yourself. In every one of those chapters, you found the uh, artists were doing all the work, they're doing all the lion's share of the work, and now increasingly corporations were cutting back on any advances, uh, cutting back on royalties, and taking more rights. So the whole point of the book was, you know, number one, own your rights. You own the rights to your work. Number two, go outside of the system. There's no reason to sign those major label uh, abusive one-sided uh, contracts. And number three, find your true fans and build your base. So build your base yourself. I started out the book with the introduction, which was all about Kickstarter and Indiegogo. And these were new things at the time to help authors, musicians, filmmakers, nonprofits get started without a ton of uh, capital. So what's happened since? One of the things that I had said 10 years ago was that, he, that I believe we're in a renaissance. And that the impact of renaissance is, uh, you know, they last, they don't last a year, two years, ten years. They last hundreds of years and their impact are felt for millennia. And I do believe we're just in the beginning phases of that and it's mostly technology enabled. But interestingly enough right now, if you look at the three biggest enablers of digital transformation over the last, you know, 40 years, 30 years, the first I would say was standardization, HTML over HTTP, HTTP. Nice standard way of delivering content, no biases, you get your content out, anybody can be a publisher. The second major transformation I believe occurred in 2007, 2008, uh, when I published a book, but also of course Apple famously delivered the iPhone. And the iPhone gave people, the average person in the street, all the computing power that NASA had to put, put, put men on the moon. Now you've got that on your, you know, in your, in your uh, pants pocket. Uh, mostly people were using it just for music and, you know, things like that. But at the same time, it really led to the social media revolution and for empowering people on platforms like Facebook and Twitter and, and others. But the biggest transformer, I believe, was just nine months ago, and that was uh, COVID-19. So, of course, I'm, it's terrible. We've had a quarter of a million people die in the U.S. alone, and hundreds of millions of people were affected this throughout the globe. Uh, no laughing matter, but at the same time, if you want to talk about true digital transformation down to the last mile, certainly COVID-19 has had a bigger impact than uh, anything I can think of, and it will continue to have a major impact. The, the famous quote from Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella a few months back where he said, we've seen two years worth of digital transformation in just the last two months. That's the kind of impact, you know, that last mile stuff that Corporations just couldn't figure out how to get the behavioral change required uh, to let people work from home and do telemedicine and remote health and remote learning and you know working from home, uh, getting deliveries from your corner deli or from the corner 7-Eleven. These things would have been unheard of nine months ago. It would have been a real challenge to get big companies like Verizon to get everyone to work from, from, from home. And yet here we are nine months into the pandemic and we're seeing things that were quote unquote nice to haves on the technology agenda being driven. So I believe the pandemic has been the biggest driver of digital transformation, maybe in our lifetime. Uh, we'll see how this shakes out. But I would say this, that when I look back on the, the first half of the book, which was how to empower uh, independence, uh, what went wrong, what went right, what went wrong. So I think if uh, you take a quick survey of just the music scene, things have not gotten any better for independence as far as getting paid and respecting their intellectual property. And let's take a look at each different field. It's pretty obvious. Journalism is absolutely falling apart. You know, 
There's no sustainable models. We've seen very few sustainable models for independent and long-form journalism. So that's a big challenge. And then, of course, it is on the defensive and com continuously attacked by the current occupant of the White House. So you know, it has its ongoing challenges, and financial support for that is, is going to be a really uh, challenging issue. I, I would like to say, after all these negative stories, I will tie this up to what I hope is a positive ending for, uh, for independence. So musicians. Sure, you know, people today, it's easier than ever to create a blog, write a book, create a film, uh, create some music, and better than ever with regard to global distribution. Every one of these, you know, from the cost of content creation to content distribution is just, you know, declining to zero. So that's a positive news. Now, the negative news is twofold, right? Uh, musicians can now put their music up on Spotify or on Pandora, you know, Spotify, Pandora, some of the other platforms. But you really do need tens of millions of spins in order to get a couple of pennies or a couple of bucks in payment. Nothing has changed for independent musicians. The other downside for musicians is we've seen a decline in uh, online venues. Not only has there been consolidation, but due to the pandemic, live music is pretty much done, finished. Uh, at least for the next year or so. And that includes Broadway, you know, plays, shows, concerts, ve big venues, small venues, local bars, the music scene is just dead. So how do musicians, so that, that would, I say, be one thing, it's is financially. Uh, they're no better off than they were before. And the other big challenge that everybody has, whether you're a musician, a filmmaker, an author, is you've got to get paid, and you've got to have your intellectual property rights respected and not be ripped off. So. Um, that, that's an application in music. Same thing is true in publishing. You know, authors today, they're going around the mainstream system. They're saying, screw you, I don't need that publishing terms where you're going to, you, you the publisher are going to take, you know, 90% of the author's revenues and take their copyrights and intellectual property along with it. And yet the author has to do all the work, all the promotion, all of the shows, all of the, you know, bookings. It's not, again, a successful uh, endeavor if you're looking to be a creative these days. Same thing in film. Easier than ever. More outlets than ever. You got Netflix. Now we got Amazon. We've got, you know, YouTube, uh, as well as all the major networks and all distribution outlets. So, you know, it's cheaper again than ever to create an independent film. What's the stumbling block? Well, once again, for every one of these fields, the biggest problem that they're having is financial compensation, intellectual property. Uh, respect for intellectual property. And lastly, the most important thing is, if it's so cheap and so easy for anyone to create content and distribute it throughout the world, how do you, as an independent, rise above the noise of everything else going on around you? So I think that's an ongoing challenge we're going to continue to see. So what's the hopeful message? Well, before I get there, let me just tie in the second half of the book because I felt it was really important to put another 200 pages into a book and make it the size of an encyclopedia. You know, there's a lot of weight to this book and it was for a reason, you know. I figured if I'm gonna self-publish a book, let me get out my real message. And the message was, we all need to support independent media. We all need to support non-profit media. So that means everything from, you know, low power FM radio stations to Wikipedia, to things that are basically designed to improve human society and not focus on for-profit media, because if all I did in that book was focus on how to make more money, I would have con been, uh, been contributing to the same problem. So I did put in lots of chapters in there on how to use the Creative Commons for your copyright, copy left and uh, Creative Commons instead of copyright uh, as a regime, uh, put in other chapters on how to create non-profit media. So what do I feel is the, the saving grace of all this? Well, I had to lean on technology once again. But I do firmly believe that the future for independent musicians, filmmakers, publishers, journalists, photographers is blockchain. Uh, it's not fully there yet. I think there are two, three missing pieces that really need to be bolstered. Uh, one is scalability and um, transaction speed, right? The more uh, transactions, the slower the system gets. But I would say that, uh, give a couple of examples on how blockchain could help uh, pay independence in the future. Well, number one, it's an immutable, you know, ledger, a distributed ledger uh, with, um, uh, the, uh, for example, let's say I'm a photographer and I want to send my photos out and get paid for it. 
well, you know, you put it on Facebook and that's sort of the end of it, you know, or you put it on Smug Mug or you put it up on a couple of different independent sites to get recognized. But for a photographer to make any money, I mean, the old world way of doing it is printing stuff out, putting it into galleries, trying to get people into a gallery. Those days are gone. It's a limited market, limited access. I believe the real future is being able to, for example, photographers put their photo on, photos onto the blockchain, embed within that photo, within that uh, uh, container, a smart contract. And smart contracts are great because they're literally little contracts that flow with the content wherever that photograph may go. Now maybe it goes to National Geographic and the end user at Nat Geo wants to use that photo on a photo shoot or on a website or on you know, a TV show. And that smart contract has built within it all of the rules and regulations and rights of way and payment t terms so that the, the receiver and the photographer can have a direct relationship without any lawyers in the middle, nobody taking a little piece here and there through the distribution chain ends up that the uh, photographer ends up with nothing. This is a way for the photographer to have a direct relationship with their fan, get paid for it, and also have a very flexible legal agreement and transaction ability uh, to get paid. Uh, on both parties. So, you know, I do believe this is the future not just for photography, but for music, for video, for anything that's written in a PDF or, you know, hard coded. Uh, it could include journalists, it could include stories, you know, it could include articles. Uh, and I'm hopeful, you know, over the next couple of years, I would say that if I were to look back, uh, I know I've got a minute or two left, but if I were to look back and say, you know, what would I have done differently? And certainly it took 10 years to write that book. And in that time that I wrote it, when I started in 2002, blogging had just taken off, right? Blogger was bought by Google, Pyro Labs. Uh, podcasting had just taken off, 1999, 2000, 2001. By the time I was done with the book in 2008, YouTube was bought by Google for like, what, $3 billion? You know, there was a tremendous amount of consolidation, but all that time and effort that went into a book, I believe I should have put into a platform a platform for independent music, film, you know, journalists, for photographers, etc. So my hope is I'm going to uh, take a little time out, go relax, think about it on the beach, meditate on it for a while, but I do believe that that's probably my next endeavor, which is once this stuff becomes scalable, really focus on getting a, a blockchain implementation with, with smart contracts to try to make that last mile. We've done the last mile. Uh, in getting deliveries from the local corner drugstore and having church services online and education done online. I think it's time to really support the independent community and finally give people a way of getting money from their art. I would say, you know, in the last comment I have, I am still hopeful about uh, the, our country and about uh, the planet. I know these are challenging times. When I look to things like TikTok, the youth of the world inspire me. They're so creative and so beautiful and so talented. And we're not seeing that on Facebook. You know, Facebook and Twitter, it has turned into literally people just sharing other people's memes. That's not creativity. That's not fun. It's not content. It's not, I don't even look to it anymore. I spend most of my time, believe it or not, on TikTok because I believe that the whole creative, you know, community is kind of gathered around that and galvanized there. Uh, to share their thoughts and insights and music and humor. And uh, it gives me hope for society that the young kids today are, despite all of the challenges around them, that they're still expressing themselves creatively and getting their, their messages out to the world. So thanks again to Jeremy. I hope that uh, gives you a good idea of what I've been up to and what I've been thinking about and what looks like what will happen in 10 years from now. I hope that when we have... 10, 30, 30, you know, we're all going to be focusing on how wonderful it is that we've got a platform that independents can finally use to, to make a living instead of working their hearts out and giving all their money to some faceless corporation. So thanks again to you for all of your work in the journey. I appreciate you all and I hope to see you again 10 years from now. Thank you.